どこのおばさまだか知らねえが早く立ち退かねえとここにももう小兵が来ますぞ坊さん危ねえ早く逃げねえ早く逃げなさい墓のように侍は In the late 13th century, after Genghis Khan had united the Mongol Empire, it was ultimately left up to his successors to continue his conquests throughout Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. Genghis' grandson, Kublai Khan, continued his grandfather's work, laying waste to all that he came across. His victories, however, would not extend to Japan. According to legend, a series of two intense typhoons known as the Kamikaze. And this is for their exceptional strength and supposedly divine origins. It decimated the Mongol fleet on its approach to Japan in both 1274 and 1281 AD. The whole glorious episode, which mixed divine intervention with heroism, would gain and hold mythical status in Japanese culture forever after. So, if you play the video game Ghosts of Tsushima, then that's really the first thing that you think of when you hear about the Mongol invasion of Japan. Sometimes video games really can teach us things. At the time, the Mongols were this unstoppable empire, and many countries feared them. And when Japan was their next target, the samurai stood up and they bravely defended their country. It's a fascinating story. You know, just putting yourself in that time period and just picturing the fear of knowing that the Mongols were coming for you next. They were known especially for their brutality. It was even recorded that people saw a mountain of dead bodies. And this is all just their enemies that they piled up as they just conquered everything. It makes you wonder what a movie adaptation of this event would really look like. Well, actually, there is a movie on this topic, and it released in 1958. It was titled Nichiren and the Great Mongol Invasion. So, before I get into the movie, just know that it was given to me from SamuraiDVD.com. This is for purpose of review, and that's where you can all get a copy. SamuraiDVD.com is the one-stop shopping for samurai cinema. They have tons of titles, many you won't find anywhere else. It's all translated into English. You can use the discount code Bushido Blues at checkout. Religious figures have always been tough to depict, especially in film. Either you insult all the followers, or you create something to please just them. There seems to really be no middle ground. And this film would fall into more so the latter. So, if you're someone like me who doesn't really know anything about the Buddhist monk Nichiren, then it may come across a little preachy. But still, even if you aren't interested in Nichiren, I feel like this could still be a really interesting film. And something you could get out of it already is just seeing two future superstars of Japanese cinema at work. So the film itself takes place during the 1200s. The legendary Buddhist monk known as Nichiren is played by the Japanese film legend Shintaro Katsu. It begins with Nichiren and he's returning from his studies to lead Japan out of a moral crisis. And he wants to do this by preparing to fight the Mongol invaders by creating a new form of Buddhism. He feels like he can stop the invasion by divine intervention. He ends up running his mouth and he pretty much disses all the existing Buddhist teachings. 
無権地獄に落ちる終始と言わなければならんやめろ And their government supporters are pissed off too, and he's persecuted. Find out if he can persevere before the Mongol fleet reaches the Japanese shores. So, right off, this sounds a lot like a movie I just saw titled Zen. And I think that's the reason why Merlin gave me this right after seeing and liking that film. Both films deal with a anti-establishment Buddhist figure that enters the game and changes Buddhism. And they both create their own teachings of Buddhism. Zen is more so rooted in personal responsibility and just the emphasis on what you can develop in yourself. But Nichiren Buddhism is based on having faith in the tradition's ability to benefit you through the practice of chanting. I will admit that this film is definitely a lot slower than Zen, and Zen was already a pretty slow film, but it's not really a surprise just keeping in mind that this is a much older film, it's from the 50s. And because of that fact and time period, the film itself can be a bit stiff and stagey, though I will say it's still very well directed. Katsu's acting in this is very serious and it's a bit theatrical. I mean, how else do you really portray a real man that was implied on having powers over lightning and typhoons? Raizo Ichikawa, on the other hand, portrays a young deputy shogun, but he never really gets to act in anything but mostly a sitting position. The film has a number of melodramatic moments. The best and most impressive is definitely the ending. It shows off a really cool battle of the invasion and just how it went down. There's also some really impressive special effects of this shipwreck. If the movie was all this, I think it might have been a classic. But instead, the whole film pretty much just leads up to this moment. It has a lot of characters just talking about the invasion coming and just their fears of it. While the battle scene is really nice, I feel like the costumes aren't very good. You know, I doubt the Mongols in real life all wore matching uniforms. Also, it kind of looks like their uniforms are just dry cleaned before invading. I get it though, I'm mostly just spoiled by Kurosawa. Anyway, it's a film worth checking out if you want to see a movie about the Mongol invasion. So far, this is really the only movie I've seen about that. Also, if you're a fan of the game, it does show Tsushima, and it even mentions Iki Island, which was the DLC in the game. This all just really just makes me want to play Ghost of Tsushima again. Anyway, it's an interesting film just for showing the time period. Also for showing Nichiren, he was definitely an interesting character. But I can't really recommend it to the average viewer. It is a very slow film, so just keep that in mind. If you want to check it out, it's available on SamuraiDVD.com. Use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. And like always, thanks for watching.